Hello everyone and a welcome back guys to episode 14 of my F1 1990s career mode guys and today we are here for the penultimate round of the season guys which takes us to Australia and you know it's it's not well it's long story short guys if you missed the last episode I would highly recommend going back and checking it out but Damon Hill has now wrapped up the Formula 1 World Championship guys we are still locked into battle with Nigel Mansell coming into the final two rounds of the season. I think we've got about a 12-point lead, I think it was, coming on into the second-to-last race of the season here at Australia. Obviously, originally, this race was at uh, uh, it was at Adelaide. Sorry if I can remember the right words. But then, obviously, in later date, it has moved to Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. And just doing a few cheeky tweaks... On the setup change and today you know we just want to go all out and try to win once again guys but ready then for the Australian Grand Prix so my main rival Nigel Mansell actually starts on pole for this Australian Grand Prix, guys. But we are ready then on the grid to start this race. It's five lights for the Australian Grand Prix. And it is lights out and away we go. And off to a fairly clean start there. Alan Frost getting off quite well alongside me there. But down towards someone here. We're going to try and have a look to the inside of a few cars. That down the inside of about five cars there in the end. Everything sort of just opened up for me on the inside there. So very, very happy with that. And up to P4 we go already. In this Grand Prix, we've got Schechter and Irvine still looking to try and make up positions back. But we go down the inside of Villeneuve and Hill there. Up to P2, we now go in this race. It's been a, it's been a dream start for us. P, uh, P9 to P2 there. And now all we've got to do now is try and close up on my main rival, Nigel Mansell here, guys. As we come through into the second sector, he's already got over a one-second lead. But hopefully, you know, we can still try to reclose back up the gap to him. In these next couple of laps of this Grand Prix, guys, we come to the end of lap one here. You can see Nigel Mansell, he's, he's still doing well, you know, in the lead of this race as we run massively deep into the second to last corner there, guys. Out through the final corner, getting a lot of wheel spin there. Struggling to put the power down here, and this has given Damon Hill a wonderful run down towards turn one here, guys. Is he going to be able to go down the inside into the corner there? He backs out of it right at the very end, which, you know, sort of a testament to the old school AI on this game. Still, you know, not exactly the best to go side by side with, guys. But there we are then. We do hold on to P2 in this race. Is now on to the end of lap three. And Nigel Mansell has dived it into the pit lane there. So, unfortunately, I think that's going to mean, you know, Tywer for me is looking very, very good at this moment in time, guys. So, it's, it's looking like the AI might, unfortunately, go for the two-stop here in this Australian Grand Prix there, guys. But you never know what might happen later on down the line, guys, if we come to... The end of lap four here, and you know the team want me to come into the pits, but you know, there's just no chance of me doing that just yet in this race. Is now the final for you guys, I think, are diving into the pit lane as we speak, there, guys. So you know we're gonna have an absolutely huge lead as we come to the end of lap five. Twenty-five seconds our lead was now, obviously after the rest of the field has made their first pit stop of the day, but we then set the fastest lap of the race as well. So you know it's not even like we're struggling. For tyre wear at this moment in time, you know, we're still going purple. And, you know, it's, it's just looking like an absolutely brilliant race for myself, guys. We come now to the end of a lap six here in another gap to Nigel Mansell. Well, we'll be able to get C as he comes through the second uh, checkpoint there, if you will, the second split. The gap now up to 25 seconds near enough there. And now diving it down into the pit lane here, you know, hopefully we can just get a clean pit stop. You know, sort of ideally want, you know, to still come out. In the lead of this Grand Prix, you know, there's not really too much of a worry if I am not able to, guys. But therefore, coming now down into our pit box here, no chance, you know, that anyone will hold us up in the pit lane there, guys. But coming out then, a 5.4 second pit stop, ever so slightly better than standard there. But still, not exactly a good pit stop there as we come out of the box now there, guys. And we're going to come back up in the lead of the Grand Prix there, guys. We're coming through turn one there, losing the back end actually quite a lot. You know, on that uh, cold set of tyres there, guys. So that's actually going to give Nigel Mansell a bit of a chance here. We're going to go massively defensive down into turn three here. Just try and hold on to the lead of this Australian Grand Prix there, guys. But, you know, we do hold on for now in this race there. And hopefully, you know, you know these guys are all going to have to pit again 
So hopefully now it should be fairly plain sailing to the end of the Grand Prix there, guys. We come through the end of lap 9 here. And you can see that uh, Nigel Mansell and on the minimap, everyone else now is going to be diving it back into the pit lane there. But we once again, we, we don't get a purple there, but we do better my PB in the Grand Prix there. Setting a 1 minute 28.8 as we do get a cheeky warning there for Karna cutting on turn 1 there, guys. But, you know, skipping on now further on down the line in this race and to the end of our lap 12 now we go. You can see the gap is just getting bigger and bigger between me and the guys behind after once again... They've made another pit stop here, but coming through the final corner once more. The gap now 32 seconds to the cars behind me there. So, you know, it's safe to say that as we skip on to the final lap of this Grand Prix, guys, the gap has come down by a couple of seconds there. But, you know, unless they were closing in about five seconds a lap, there was absolutely no chance that they were going to be able to get back past me there, guys. But, you know, unfortunately, sort of just been one of those races where, unfortunately, you know, the AI... Opt to make a two-stop when they really, really don't need to, you know. Sort of these high lap races always end up producing some weird strategy calls by the AI guy there, guys. But there we are then, coming through to win the Australian Grand Prix there. A very, very dominant drive in the end. But there we are then, guys, at the end to the Australian Grand Prix there. And I managed to take home the race victory 31 seconds ahead of Nigel Mansell there. As unfortunately, as I said, you know, one of those races where if, you know, the track has got a, it's, you know, a short track with a lot of laps, the AI does tend to get a little bit funny and try to go for a two-stop, you know, take the softs like three laps in, which is just a little bit odd if you ask me there, guys. But unfortunately, therefore... That didn't lead to the most exciting race in the world, but we were still able to come through to take home the race victory there, pull out another crucial seven points over my main rival, Nigel Mansell there. And Eddie Irvine comes through in P3 there. Jacques Leonov just missing out on the podium there, but Jody Schechter having a good race out in P5 there. Alan Prost at P6 with Damon Hill all the way down in P7, obviously. He's already wrapped up the Drivers' World Championship, so no real pressure for him there with David Coulthard at P8, John Lacey 9th, Ivan Capelli 10th, and the Schumacher boys both outside the top 10 there, you know. That won't be ideal for us in the Constructors' standings, but I think we will still have closed down just a few points on the FW14B team, guys. As we have a look then at the Constructors' standings, we have now got a 20-point lead over Nigel Mansell then at the, at the you know, sort of the, the top end of the standings there, guys. Damon Hill, obviously, a 48-point lead still. So, you know, we're still... We're, we're closing in the gap to Damon Hill quite a lot, guys. But, unfortunately, you know, it, it just won't be enough, obviously, as we move on into the final race of the season. You know, if it was two races left, then although it would still be really unlikely, you know, we would still, therefore, mathematically be within a shot of the world title, guys. But, yeah, the gap to Nigel Mansell now, just 20 points there. So, we need a P7... In the uh, a Brit well, the second British Grand Prix at Brands Hatch, guys, to be able to take home the world champion. Oh, sorry, second in the world championship. There, guys. I sometimes forget that Damon Hill has absolutely romped away in this season, guys. But hopefully, you know, we can flick over to the constructors in just a second to have a look at. You know, I think now mathematically the gap should be about six points. Yet between ourselves and the FW14 B team. So you know, if I can outscore. Nigel Mansell and my teammate can outscore uh, David Coulthard there. We could be looking like very, very strong as we move into the final race of this season, guys. We know still a lot to play for overall in the standings, guys. But hopefully, you know, you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time for a brand new video.